Okay, here we go, YouTube. Got my discharger set up here, so I'm just showing you the top here, but I've got all eight of the battery holders here. I've got the, the sense wires plugged into the little side connectors. That kind of limited my positioning of the holders. I didn't want to go extending all these wires, so this red wire here is pretty much my limit on the uh, battery holder, and then I made up two shorter solid core wires here for the discharge current and I haven't hooked this up yet but I've got a little DC to DC buck converter here and I'll be adding a coax power plug out here and then I've got an on off switch I'll set this for 12 volts output and then run this into the power there that way I can run this converter off of 12 volts 16 volts which is my lithium battery pack voltage right now and if I do go up to 24 volts I can still run that. I think this handles up to 30 or 36 volts and then I've got my uh, cell voltage tester here so if I need to check a battery voltage I just have to pop that in so these guys are ready to discharge here so I've got all the voltages recorded they were 4.06 so these cells all came out of some Dell packs they were all about 3.77 volts and then they all tested out 4.06 after a couple of weeks so with these ZB206 dischargers they will by default they go into discharge mode but if you hold down this SK key when you plug in power so one thing I've done is I've set all these to the four wire mode there's a two wire mode this is the default and then four wire and to get that to save what you need to do is skip through all the modes until you get out of the mode setting and then if you power down and plug in it comes back to the four wire mode and then the other thing is if you hold down the minus key s minus then it goes into resistance mode and now you can just plug in a cell plug it in that way and there we get 38 39 milliohms so i can just run through all my cells or these are pairs there's another 30 38 39 milliohms and then if I put in one of my singles, these Dell packs were 3S, 3P, so every group I get a pair and then a single cell. And just to show you here, you get about 77 milliohms, about twice the resistance with just one, one cell. I figure I'll just use like the FOP tester here, so I do all my resistance testing on the same one. Let's see if they how close these actually measure here. I'll do the second one here. Plug that one in here. Yeah, see, you're going to get different readings on the different devices. So I think I'll just stick with using one particular one, you know, this front one here, maybe for the resistance testing. Because if you start testing on many different devices, you're going to get different readings. So anyway, let's get that. Out. So let's load up a bunch of cells here, get them all filled. So I've got three pairs and then three singles. So let's see, let's power up. Yeah, so they'll go down to three volts. Nope, oh, error six. Okay, I found, found the problem. Error six is the input voltage was too low. And I was using this 12 volt lipo battery charger. It's supposed to be 12 volts, one amp, but it apparently dropped below that because this thing is a uh, uh, voltage range is 11 to 14 volts. So some of these must be a little more sensitive. But what I've done is plug this into my bench supply for now. And it looks like everybody's running. We got, let's see, so amp hours is the top one. So we've got 27 milliamp hours, right there, 28, 27, 
Oh yeah, these are getting getting warm. Yeah, so here's the current. Let's see, I've got eight dischargers, so 230 milliamps, 12.8 volts. So I bumped the voltage up a little bit. My LiPo charger was putting out 12.4 volts, no load. But yeah, we'll let this run and see, see what we get here. Yeah, so there's the finished discharger. So I'm, I've got two empties there, and then I've got three singles and then three doubles up there. I think that'll work pretty good. I can measure the resting cell voltage right there and then I can put it into resistance testing mode, test up to eight cells that I'm going to do a discharge on for resistance, then put it into discharge mode and then I can discharge up to eight pair of cells like that. So. Yeah, I think that'll work pretty good. So let's let this run. It'll probably run for, oh, a couple of hours. Probably three or f at least four hours because these these will usually test out around 4,000 milliamp hours on the pairs. These will be in the 2,000 range, so they should finish in about two hours. Okay, here we go. YouTube, let's check the uh, temperatures there. Yeah, so we're getting about 75, 76. Depends on where you're at on the heat sink there. But they're all all running about the same, right around 70 C. You can feel the heat coming off of there. Here's the fan minus pad right there. So there's a little transistor fan signal. And then you can hook up to the 12 volt positive wire. So you get a 12 volt uh, fan control. And what I might do is put a bracket here on the bottom and have a fan blowing upward along all of those uh, heat sinks just to uh, get a little better airflow. But yeah, we'll see how this works. It looks like it's going though. Yeah, the, the doubles are cool. The single cells are just slightly warmer than, you know, these guys are cold. These are just barely warm. But yeah, I think that's working okay. So we'll, we'll let this finish and then see what kind of uh, capacity numbers we get.